Welcome to the shop everyone. Today on part two of the big block bottom end assembly series, we're gonna be installing the rods onto the pistons and also the piston rings onto the pistons. Now these spiral locks that hold the piston pin in place have always been a worthy opponent for me to install. And I was shown a simple way of just having a little mandrel that holds the piston or rod in place while you try to put those spiral locks on. So first let's go ahead and uh, fab us up a, a little mandrel to hold the pistons and rods in place. And first I'm just going to machine off a little just to get a new surface, good, good nice surface. I'm going to take a small cut. Machine the end off, make a good and square. Break the sharp edges. And now I'm just gonna get a, a piston pin length, mark it off and cut it. Use the parting tool on the lathe to do that. Break the sharp edge again. All right, so now I need to get a inside diameter of the piston pins. So I wanna machine that down to where the piston pin will slide onto that easily. Make a couple cuts here. Make a quick check. Okay, let's see where we're at. Looks like we got 40 thousandths to go. Break the sharp edge on the end there. Ah, perfect. All right, so for it to clamp in the device, I'm gonna machine some flat spots on either side. Flip it over and do the other side. All right, looking nice. So let's stick it in the vise and see how it does. We'll grab a piston and put on there. And it being made out of aluminum, it won't scratch the piston. And you also want to make sure you know you have some tape on your vise and things like that, just in case the ring lamp on the piston does touch. You just don't want to damage anything. So here I'm just going through the rods, putting assembly lube on the pin bores, and then also going through putting assembly lube on a, a lube on the piston where the pin will run inside there and also putting a small coat onto the pin itself. All right, so I already had the pistons laid out with the right rod, so my valve clearance will be on the correct side of the engine when I assemble it, or my valve relief as I should say. All right, so let's put it on the mandrel. Now, these grooves actually take two of these spiral locks in each one. So let's insert the first one. You know, I'll like spread it open and put it over my finger to get it started. And 
and I'll, I'll roll it in there. And uh, another thing I'll do is a lot of times I'll take a real small screwdriver and I'll kind of tap it to make sure it's seated fully into the groove. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen where a, a pin had come loose or a, and uh, just the pin worked its way out and ran into the side of the cylinder wall, but it, it makes a mess of things. So I always want to make sure those spiral locks are fully seated in there. Take a hammer and tap them around. All right, so we got number one. Looking good. Number two on there. Get the first lock started. And also something I try to do is since there's two locks per groove, uh, if I put them in the same way, both of the locks starting points will line up. So sometimes I'll flip it back and forth just to have the starting groove at a different spot. Don't know that it matters, it's just something that I do. But the mandrel holding things in place just really helps out here. All right, and that is already number eight. Didn't want to bore you guys with going through every single one. And by the eighth one, and you've got a, you know, it's an easier job than the first couple ones with these spiral locks. But kind of once you get a way of doing it, the job goes a lot better. All right, there we go. So the old mandrel worked out nicely. So now we're ready to install the piston rings onto the pistons and in one of the earlier videos where we gapped the rings to each cylinder, I just left them in that cylinder so they're all in the correct order still. So pulling out a number one cylinder, put my old ring on first and then the, the second ring. You know, it usually has a dot on it for the direction it goes up, but also I've shown a way that you can check to make sure that's correct, because we know in manufacturing, things don't always go right. There's mix-ups. So you can actually set the ring on end and hold it down, and it should have a slight angle to one side. So the angle should be towards the dot to where the biggest edge is towards the bottom. It's supposed to act as like a like a oil scraper too, I guess to help the um, oil ring some. So that's just another check that you can do to make sure that the second ring is orientated correctly with the dot. And also on the top ring, there's also a mark on it and there'll be a little shaper on the inside. Your uh, piston ring pack will probably show you uh, which way it should be orientated and so that's also another good thing to check make sure it's correct too all right going down through there pulling them out of cylinders as I go for the piston checking everything and you notice that piston ring installing tool I'm using uh, my granddaughter actually got me that and she had no idea what it was to be used for but she thought I should have it so there I am using it so thanks so much Natalie for the birthday gift came in very handy all right we're on number eight and like I say, the vise, I just put rags in it and make a, a soft, you know, it doesn't damage anything, nick anything. Alright, that part's done. So in the next video, we'll be orientating the piston rings onto the piston, 
installing them into the bore and torquing the rod bolts. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please hit the like, uh, share, and subscribe. And we hope to see y'all on the next project. Thanks so much.